The first reading is from Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like cow calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is actually Psalm 98. And we're going to do it according to him being away. O sing to the Lord, O sing God a new song, O sing to the Lord, O sing God a new song, O sing to the Lord, O sing God a new song, O sing to our God, O sing to our God. For God is the Lord, and God has done wonders for God. And God has done wonders, for God is the Lord. And God has done wonders, so sing to our God, oh sing to our God. So dance for our God, and blow all the trumpets, so dance for our God. And blow all the trumpets, so dance for our God. And blow all the trumpets and sing to our God and sing to our God. Oh, shout to our God who gave us the Spirit. Oh, shout to our God who gave us the Spirit. Oh, shout to our God who gave us the Spirit. Oh, sing to our God. Oh, sing to our God. For Jesus is Lord. Amen, alleluia. For Jesus is Lord. Amen, alleluia. For Jesus is Lord. Amen, alleluia. Oh, sing to our God. Oh, sing to our God. The second reading is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored, as happened among you, and that we may do, be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that, among, <clears throat> that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Please stand. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, Lord. While some were speaking of the temple, of it was adorned with noble stones and offerings. Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. And then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds. Do not meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for you in my name's sake, but not here of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your life. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart. And let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days. For there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against these people. And they will fall by the edge of the, of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth the stress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And this, my friends in Christ, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You can be seated for this. And we know this hymn very well, I know we do. Now look on top, there will be all, verse 1, 3, 6, women, verses 2 and 4, and men, you're going to shine at verse 5. Lord, have mercy on our souls. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When under hell first fail Help of the helpless soul, abide in me. Abide in thy presence, every passing hour. 
think about. Why not? Why not? Why not? Isn't dealing with time one of our greatest struggles? Isn't wearing this thing around your wrist? I wear one all the time, even the bed. Lord have mercy. You know, my skin under that has never, ever tanned. You know, I'm all tanned, but that never has. You know, I could just draw the face of the clock on there and I'd be safe, you know. But we're always, always, boy, if I don't walk out of that door at precisely 11 o'clock, there's some of you who squirm a little bit, you know. You know, okay, good, I'll come out next week at about 10 after that. will really drive you nuts. But we're concerned about time. Of course we are, you know. We begin life as children, don't we? Everybody say yes. yes. Okay, all right. And children have an innocent concept of time. I babysat my six-year-old granddaughter yesterday. Wow. Oh. I told them last night, she wears me out. <laughs> oh my gosh, she wears me out. Always moving, always moving, always moving. And asking, why this, Grandpa, why this? Why, why, why can't I have one more uh, licorice? Why not one more? Just one more, Grandpa, please. <laughs> okay, you know. <laughs> okay, you know. Well, and then, and then, you know, when we're teenagers, you know, you wake up on Christmas Day. When, when do we get to open the presents? What time do we open the presents? What time do we do that? Wow. Now, on the other hand, on the count on my birthday, when's my birthday? What? When's my birthday? Am I having a birthday party? Do I get any birthday gifts? When, 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 when? How, how, how? And then we go old. <laughs> We've all been there, haven't we? I'm not there yet. Oh, the heck I'm not. <laughs> Lord. Jeez. You know, and when you get old, you know, you, the days kind of stretch out before us, and you wonder, wow, you know, and you wonder about the time between visitors and the meals, you know, and between the great effort of getting ready for bed, and then getting up in the morning. I use the curie in my days on this planet. I go, Lord, have mercy. My wife always says, what did you hit? What did you break? Are you trying to get up? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm trying to get up. And as we think of the lost and the saved, the question becomes this, when? One word, when? When, when, when? And we're not alone in asking that question. We never are alone in asking that. When was the disciples' question to Jesus at the time they were standing there in front of that temple? When? And they were in Jerusalem, were they not? Looking at probably one of the greatest wonders of the world at that time. And all kinds of beautiful stones, all kinds of beautiful gems, golden rooftop. Wow, can you imagine? Well, roofing that building, ooh, interesting. But Jesus was acting as a tour guide here, okay? And he says to the disciples that were gathered around, all of this is going to be rubble. All of this is going to be gone. How right he was, wasn't it? It was disassembled on, on, on the year 70 AD by the Romans. They would had it up to here with the Jews and the Christians. Up to here, temple gone, hauled away. When, teacher, when, teacher, when, 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 when will this be? And Jesus says this, no warning, no warning at all. Some sign that we know. And Jesus responds, not with a countdown, no way, not with a calendar, and I'm not going to give you a clue. Interesting, I find. It does not say when. He doesn't say when at all. In addition, we might be totally surprised in how unclue-like he really was. Nothing to mark on the calendar. Nothing to write in our book. Not anything to set you watch by. Nope. In fact, it's if Jesus had really said to his disciples, the sun will rise and set, spring will follow winter, and winter will follow fall. That's it. That's the clue. And you're sitting there going, okay. We like to know when things are going to happen. We like to know when someone's coming home for dinner. We like to know what time Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving dinner will be served. 
We like to know. We like to know. We always want to know. What did he say of earthquakes, wars, famines, plagues? And they were then, and guess what? They're still here today, are they not? Absolutely. There's enemies, there's strategies, there's weapons, there's targets. They change, but wars continue on. Haven't stopped for 2,000 plus years. Now, Jesus never predicts what's going to happen in the future. Uh-uh, no. He's not a doomsday forecaster at all, no. Jesus doesn't call his disciples into forecasting either. He calls them to faith. This scripture passage and the ones previous to it calls us to faith. Doesn't tell us when, not at all, no. He tells us how to live. Today and every day. I find it's, in, it's significant that, that rather than signs of an end times, Jesus tells us about all the things around us in the world today. He confronts our fears and our anxieties of living in dangerous times. Is it dangerous times here? Is it? Yes. Boy, the minute I get off of Sandy, I'm not 205. Am I living in dangerous times until I get off at 213? No. I get off on 213. That's even worse. There were two collisions this morning on the way here at 630 in the morning. And as I usually say, Lord have mercy. You know? Could have been me. We live in dangerous times. But Jesus confronts us in our life in these times of dangerous times. He never promises Ever. Do you ever find it? He never, ever promises to rescue us from the dangerous times. Not at all. I know that. My heavens. I've been doing this for 73 years. Actually, not really. <sighs> for 60 years. Jesus calls his disciples, and I'm talking about you now, to live in these dangerous times, in this suffering world, Bearing witness to him who will not let suffering have the last word. We had a memorial service here last Saturday, a week ago Saturday. And the pastor was a pastor from Finland. Incredibly interesting guy. And that's precisely what he said. And I swiped that from him. He's not going to be here today. You know? <laughs> so I stole that from him. I thought that was incredible. You know? And living in Finland, that's a little tougher than living here. Russia always likes to slap Finland around a little bit. They, they always lose. I don't know why they keep going after it all the time. But that's the, the country they live in. That we are the ones who can bring God's love in word to those outside of us. That's why we have. I asked my Bible study class today, what's, what's the point of this congregation? Who are we? As faithful Savior Luther, who are we in the world today, in our neighborhood around us? Who are we? What are we to do? To sit here every Sunday for the next 10 years? Huh? You know the answer to that, don't you? Hello? Share the word. Hello? Spread the word. Hello? Spread we don't word. spread the word amongst ourselves, or do we? <laughs> We don't do that. I hear you chatting in the back. I to listen to what you say I have to do before you come in here. And guess what? That ain't sharing the word. I hear sports. Good for the beavers. Yes. I'm not a beaver fan, but I'm glad they're winning. You know? And yes for Oregon. That's all I hear. We show Christ's love to everyone we meet. We do? We show Christ's love to everyone we need. We show Christ's love. So when you're standing back there, you're showing Christ. When we leave. Really? Oh, a little, a little light coming over your head? A little halo over there? I know what you're saying, though. I know. I know exactly what you're saying. And, and that's truly really true. We are. We are. And by being here, you are showing Christ's love to each other. And by, by the way, I can name where you all sit, too. 
You know? It doesn't change from Sunday to Sunday. Praise God. I'm glad you're here. I love it. I'm here. Even though I'm here, I'm right there every Sunday. Most of the time. But Jesus gives us signs. And not words. To predict the end. I want you to understand that. Very, very important. They're useful for us to see where God is. Where we can be useful to others. We can be useful to others among the poor. The lost. The least. The lonely. The weak. I don't see any of that here. And the crippled. Pardon? And the crippled. Oh, Beverly. <laughs> That's not a word we use anymore. Oh. Lord have mercy. <laughs> the lame disabled, you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Say what I The guy who walks funny when he comes in here. <laughs> I do too. So I'm in your crowd, okay? I do. You notice I don't walk up those steps anymore. I gotta be careful with that. The lame. How's that? The lame? Uh, all right, we'll go with that. <laughs> Thank you, Beverly. I like when people talk to me. It adds a whole new dimension to what I'm talking to you about, see? But our readings today point to the ultimate victory of God in this, in this life. With not an end time, every day, every single day, knowing who holds the future is Jesus Christ. And we can be aware of that. That's why we're here. Not to be alarmed, but be faithful, but never forecasting. Don't ever do that. That's for the Jehovah's Witnesses. They can do that, you know. They're good at that, by the way. But what, let me ask you a question. What does the future hold for you as a person and for this congregation as a whole? What, don't give me that scowl there, March. I saw that. No. Man, if, if I didn't know that there was a future of a faithful Savior, I'd walk out this door, run out the back, Go into my office, pick up my stuff, and walk out. Don't come back. <clears throat> that wouldn't be fair to you. It wouldn't be fair to me. Because this tells me there is a future for any of us who live in Him. <sighs> well, every age, no pain, you bet. You bet. We all have pain. Every one of us can share pain that we've experienced in our lives. Yet you're still here. You're still here. God holds the future for your life and for the life of this body called Faithful Savior, Lutheran Church. And believe me, it is in this building. It's all of you sitting in these pews. That's who Faithful Savior is to me. He's a generous and faithful God. That holds all that holds all of life, all of life in his hands. And we are free. We are free to be faithful. That's the beauty of this message. We are here in, in, to free to be faithful. To live every day as if it matters. Every day as if it matters. And that does every single day. Lord, thank you for this day. I don't like what the radio says, you know, oh. Well, Nice to have you on hump day, which I figured out after a while was Wednesday. <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. You know, I always say, someone said to me today, you know, at our Bible study, Thank God it's Monday. It's a whole day ahead of us, a whole week ahead of us, a whole week of opportunities. So we are free to be faithful, to live every day as though it matters. And we can live as though this day is the most important day of our lives. An opportunity to show love and respect and not fear and to be aware and not alarmed. So I say to you today, live this day. Live this day. Live this day and every day knowing that God holds them all for you. Amen. And so may the peace of God and all that passes, which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's stand and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, our Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of the Lord, who lives in the Son of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious pilot, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come.
forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you.